opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers. Stay up to date with all things cricket. Subscribe to Crick Boss's YouTube channel and press that bell icon now. Agony and ecstasy, delight and disappointment. The final day in round one of the C20 World Cup had it all as the final two places were up for grabs in the Super 12s from Group B. First game was the West Indies taking on Ireland and the second one, Zimbabwe taking on Scotland. Let's recap it all in our match story. Fighting for a place in that Super 12, two-time T20 World Cup champions West Indies opted to bat first after winning the toss. And their batting has been a trouble, especially in this round one so far. Even in their last game against Zimbabwe, they couldn't really get going. And that was the same case against Ireland. Spin being their biggest nemesis. Apart from Brandon King and towards the end, Odin Smith, no other batter really seemed like staying out there and putting an innings together. Which meant at the end of the 20 overs, courtesy some incredible bowling from Gareth Delany, the West Indies could only manage 146 runs on the board. Now, if the batting performance was pretty similar to the last game, West Indies would take a lot of hope from the fact that they were able to defend a 150-odd score in the first game against Zimbabwe. This time around, things are going to be very different because Paul Sterling and Andy Balburnie, the openers for Ireland, came out with a lot of method to their madness. 64 runs inside the power play. In that smaller chase, if you gun down that many runs, control the required run rate so well, the bowlers can't really do much. And that was the case with the West Indian bowlers. All the bowlers, be it Alzari, Joseph, be it Obert, McCoy, all of whom starred in that defence against Zimbabwe, failed to do so against Ireland. Lorcan Tucker gave the finishing touches to the Irish innings. Ireland knocking out two-time T20 World Cup champions from round one and actually vanquishing them by nine wickets and making it to the Super 12s. In the second game of the day, Scotland were taking on Zimbabwe. Scotland won the toss and opted to bat first and their hero from the last game, Michael Jones, and also Matthew Cross who got runs in the last game, couldn't really get going. Zimbabwe's bowlers were on point and even after that, Scotland tried to really put the foot on the accelerator but it didn't really ever turn out to be that sort of an innings. At the end of their 20 overs, which meant that Zimbabwe had a very decent target in sight, one that they would hope to gun down. But the Scottish were not going away without a fight. Two wickets inside the first two overs. Madhavere gone. Chakabwa gone. Then Sean Williams was gone as well. And it fell on the shoulders of those two giants of Zimbabwe's batting, Sikandar Raza and Irvine. And they didn't disappoint when the big stage came calling. Towards the end of the game though, it did seem like a very easy chase. They chased it down with over and over to spare. Zimbabwe becoming the second team to qualify into Super 12. But by the virtue of being ahead on the net run rate, Zimbabwe qualify as B1 and go into the group with India, Pakistan and South Africa. Ireland on the other hand qualify as B2 and go into the group with Australia, England and New Zealand. Now we have our four qualifiers into the Super 12s from round one, which means all gazes will now turn towards Super 12, where every game day we will be here with Crick Bus Live in Hindi and in English. So make sure you stay tuned right here.